Today we're looking at heart sounds, primarily S1 and S2. We're going to touch on S3 and S4, which are most of the time pathological sounds. Now S1 marks the closing of the AV valves, that's between the atria and the ventricles, so we're thinking tricuspid and mitral valves. S2 marks the closing of the semilunar valves, that's aortic and the pulmonary valves. Now S1 marks the beginning of systole or ventricular contraction. So it's going to be a bit high pitched compared to some of the other heart sounds, so we listen using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Cuspid valve to try and remember which side it is. I think of tri, it sounds like right, sort of rhymes a little bit, so it's on the right side of the heart. Um, so we're listening on the left sternal border of the fourth intercostal space. For the mitral valve, which is the left side of the heart, we're going to be listening in the fifth intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line. Now both sounds, as I said, are relatively high-pitched, so we're going to be using the diaphragm, not the bell, but the diaphragm of the stethoscope to listen. Just a little bit of a visual representation of where we listen to those heart sounds, here's a little diagram. Now, as I said, S2 is produced by the closing of the semilunar valves, that's the pulmonary and the aortic valve. Now, they're highly pitched as well, so using the diaphragm once again. You can see both of them are in the second intercostal space on the left and right side of the sternum. Now, if you listen closely now, you're going to hear S1 and S2. Remember, S1 comes first, obviously, and S2 second. See if you can hear them. Now, for the less common heart sounds, S3 is produced by a rapid filling and expansion of the ventricles. You can imagine them sort of snapping open almost. That occurs right after S2, it's when the AV valves open. It may be a normal finding in young patients and in pregnant patients, but almost always pathological after 40 years of age. The most common cause of pathological S3 sounds is a congestive cardiac failure. Now S4 is produced by forceful atrial contractions, forcing blood into the stiff ventricles once again. It occurs immediately before S1 in late diastole. Unlike S3, S4 is always pathological. Now this sound is more low pitched than S1 and S2, so auscultation using the bell of the stethoscope is required, not the diaphragm, but the bell, um, to be able to pick the sound up. So use the diaphragm to sort of auscultate S1 and S2, and then auscultate using the bell to look out for pathological sounds.